Empirical and molecular formulas, use of percentage composition. This is a little podcast to try and help you with uh, uh, this particular part in Chemistry 1. So, moving along. Calculating molar mass. You will remember from uh, last unit that in order to calculate the molar mass, say the formula mass of magnesium carbonate, you need the molar masses from the periodic table of all three things. You go ahead and multiply them by their respective amounts and you get a value. You can all do that. Likewise, percentage composition can be calculated from that information. You happen to know that from the previous slide we have a molar mass for magnesium carbonate. The amount of magnesium is 24.31 grams, so it is 28.83% of the total. Same thing with the carbon. We've got one carbon, 12.01 divided by 84.32 times 100 gives you the 14 0.24%. And finally, the oxygen is the remainder, and clearly you could have done it by subtracting from 100, but notice that we are going to four significant figures in every single case. Okay. Formulas. Formulas come in two types. We have the empirical formula. That is defined as the lowest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. That might be different from the molecular formula, which is the true number of atoms of each element in the formula of a compound. It would be a multiple of the empirical formula, but remember that times one is technically a multiple. The molecular formula is the empirical formula to some integer n, and the example would be benzene, C6H6, which is really CH taken six times, so we would say the empirical formula is CH. Okay, moving along. Formulas for ionic compounds are always empirical. Remember that when we did ionic compounds, when we were writing out the formulas, we always made sure we reduced to lowest terms. What we were really doing was reducing to empirical formulas. So the examples of sodium chloride and magnesium chloride, aluminum sulfate, potassium carbonate, and multitudes of others are always to the lowest whole number ratio. Remember, you don't take the complex ions apart. Okay. In the case of molecular compounds, it might be empirical. Okay. So for example, Water has a molecular and an empirical formula of H2O. You can't get any lower than that, right? But C6H12O6 for glucose can reduce to CH2O, which is the empirical formula of glucose and many other carbohydrates, by the way. Sugar, on the other hand, although it's a carbohydrate, cannot be reduced because, as you may know, 11 being the prime number, we can't divide it by anything. Okay. Well, how do we get them? We can get them on the basis of percent composition. So, if we have percentage composition data, we can do a calculation based on 100 grams of compound. So, what we do is convert our percents to grams. That's pretty straightforward. Then, determine the number of moles of each element in that 100 gram sample of compound using the molar masses, like this. Okay? Adipic acid contains the following percentages by mass. That would be an analysis we would get from a laboratory. What's its empirical formula? Well, we have 49.32 grams of carbon, 43.84 grams of oxygen, and 6.85 grams of hydrogen. And you go through and calculate the number of moles of carbon, the number of moles of hydrogen, and the number of moles of oxygen. And we get 4.107 moles of carbon, 6.78. This is what we've done before. There's nothing new here. Now, once you have that data, we then divide each value of moles that we just calculated by the smallest of all of the values. What do I mean? I mean we take carbon and we've got 4.107 moles of carbon divided by the 2.74 moles of oxygen. The 2.74 moles of oxygen was the lowest and that gives us one and a half carbon for each oxygen. You do the same for hydrogen and we discover that we've got 2.47 hydrogen for each oxygen. Now I'm going to round that probably to 2.5. After all, this is experimental data. And finally, the oxygen, of course, comes out to be 1. Well, what do we do with those? You then want to work through and find out what is the simplest whole number ratio that we have using that proportion. And the best way to do it is to multiply them by an integer to get them into whole numbers. And since we've got a 1.5 and, and a 2.5, Okay, we can multiply by two, and you'll find that we get three whole numbers and the empirical formula for adipic acid, C3H5O2. 
You can play this again and run through it, but it's the same routine every single time. Now, once you have the empirical formula, we want to go and find the molecular formula. That's done since we know the molar mass of a dipic acid. We would get that from independent calculations or independent determinations. Okay? Turns out to be 146 grams per mole. Well, since we have the empirical formula mass, because we have the empirical formula, three times the carbon, five times the hydrogen, two times the oxygen, we get 73. My hope is you can already see where I'm going to go. Because since the empirical formula and the molecular formula are related by an integer, okay, we're going to want to take the molar mass of the empirical formula mass and divide it by the molecular mass. I got that backwards. Take the molecular mass and divide it by the empirical formula mass, we get a value of 2. So what that means is that you then multiply the empirical formula by that and you get the molecular formula, which is C4. H10O4, which when you go and do the calculation, we'll discover is 146 grams per mole, and we are